Welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Color Break, your third favorite comic book podcast. I am your host, Cody Collects. Um, we've got a good show packed for you today. I'm here, as always, with my host, uh, co-host. Uh, com- comic Book Stash, or Christian, however you want to call me. As long as I know How it's doing, me, buddy? I'm good. You know what? I'm great. How are you, bud? You know, doing good. Um feel busy you know what i mean anxious all the time but that's just being an adult you just gotta yeah. learn to live with it it's it's been a, a weird week but in a, in a good way you know halloween and all that yep true uh, um obviously no guests for this episode going classic going a little bit old school for all you uh long time listeners <laughs> um but yeah so we got a we got a fun show pack today <laughs> But I like to start with a simple question. Christian, what have you been reading, dude? Let the listeners know. What have I been reading? So I caught up in uh, Nice House on the Lake, which like I feel like I if I keep talking about it, they better pay me. Um, <laughs> I just I, I just talk about that book so much. But it's good, man. It's just so good. I haven't been reading much, but I've been like getting into comics, if that makes any sense. Yeah, dude. I know like, what you I've mean. been like concentrating and like looking, like cutting down my 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 list. Like I know, like, and it's disappointing because there's like there's runs I like, but I've been like cutting out. Like for example, The Mandalorian, which is just like a retelling of the show. I I took right. it out of the list because I was like, I don't want to spend the money. It's good, it's great, but like honestly, like I haven't been like wanting to read them. I cut out Predator, the Marvel run. Also, great run, but it's just, it wasn't in my top. Like, if I looked at it in the week, I was like, what can I get rid of? Yeah. And, uh, yeah just cutting down on some things that I wasn't reading. And that's that's good. Sometimes you got to do it. And it's it's kind of hard at first when you start collecting to get rid of the things on your list. Because you're like, man, it's like you're disappointing the artist. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's like, um, especially for indies, right? Like, I always feel bad cutting an indie book because, um, you know, they... You know, could use it more than uh, the big two, but sometimes you got to do it. It just comes down to, you know, the funds. Uh, like, for example, I'm trying to eventually I'd like to buy a house. So that was my goal. I was like, all right, I can't just be dropping, you know, all this money every week. Got to weed something out. So actually, this is this is kind of uh, related to this topic, but I cut out every Marvel book except for daredevil and moon knight um, oh wow that's a big one which is like pretty crazy for me because i was reading alien i was reading predator uh amazing spider-man i wanted to jump off amazing spider-man before the whole dark web arc goes on because then that one's gonna have a bunch of tie-ins and all that stuff and i already was on the edge on the series so i'm like you know what i gotta jump off this train before it um goes off the cliff now <laughs> i'm sure the series will be fine i just i didn't want to you know if i was gonna cut something i really felt like amazing spider-man was an easy cut um but in terms of what i've been reading uh so obviously i don't know maybe people don't know this but i on my tiktok channel i just did a series of halloween reviews um so i read clementine book one uh published by image comics written by tilly walden written and drawn by tilly walden um like that a lot also did uh witches which is a really fun read too really creepy and um what was the third one i did i can't remember oh yeah deceased uh i was trying to do four but like that was tough <laughs> because this was like such a crazy month for me october um but yeah so that's what i've been reading i was just trying to catch up on you know my single issues then the halloween review um in terms of what I plan on reading, I'm going to be cracking open the uh, Marvel Color series by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. So that's your Spider-Man Blue, Daredevil Yellow, uh, Hulk Gray, and then Captain America White. I, I think those are the four. And uh, I have them in the Omnibus. So I think I'm going to do a new series similar to the Halloween one where I just do one of those. Um, I, I've read two so. of those and they're great. 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to read it because, you know, everybody always talks about Spider-Man Blue and Daredevil Yellow. Uh, so um, I read yeah. uh, Spider-Man Blue, which made me cry at work. I think I've mentioned this before. And uh, I read Hulk Gray. Hulk Gray is a really deep, like, also sad story. And uh, I want to... It's one of those books that like I like the Omni, but I want to own this, the trades for some reason. That just feels more special for the trades for those. It this it makes no sense, but I, no, I I feel you. I think um that's one of those series that if after I read it and it ends up being as good as everybody says it is, that's one that I could see getting in like multiple formats, which is kind of like a crazy thing to say, but it's like. Oh, cool! I have the Omni, and if I ever see like the trade in the wild, I'll definitely try to pick it up. Um, but yeah, so that that's like my plan going forward. Uh, but we also, Christian and I, thought of you know because we're so smart, we got huge brains. Thought of a new series we'd like to start. Um, maybe every episode or every other episode we uh, of the podcast, we kind of just shout out like two new series that just started or. Um, things that want to highlight that we've been reading currently. Um, so I'll, I'll hand it off to you, dude. What have you been? We'll come up with a name for this segment, but what yeah. have you been reading like recently that? Um, um like? I, I I can only. I mean, I have two series that I can recommend. I've talked yeah, about one it. of them before, um, and it's uh, Survival Street. Survival Street's a, a, a series that I'm really loving. I'm really enjoying every single issue. Uh, Four just came out. And uh, I mean, if you're trying to start a new indie series that's fun, it's about Muppets who are going around the country, you know, getting vengeance against the government. Uh, it's great. It's it's a fantastic story. And uh, it's a it's a, like a nine out of ten, eight out of ten for me, which is great. Um, and uh, yeah, it's four issues. You know, if you want to like it's four issues out so far, if you want to get into a new run, it's not that hard to find. Um, and you can just buy all four, you know, it'll probably run you like, what, $16, which is not bad. And, right. uh, the other one I want to recommend is, uh, Vanish by Donny Cates. I know issue number two just came out last week. I haven't read it yet, but issue number one was one of my favorite first issues for a comic book series. Uh, the characters are very well written. Um, and I just think it's a very compelling story. I don't know how to explain it even. It's, uh kids with powers and then he grows up and he's like an alcoholic and like just a mess but he's just trying to like still you know be the hero nice uh, it's a fun um, story so so that's funny i so i have vanish um like i knew i wanted it like a while ago when it first got solicited uh because you know donny cates and then uh who's doing the art it's stegman right yeah ryan stegman okay cool um, but I haven't read it and I didn't know anything. I didn't even read the solicitation. Um, I just knew like with that creative team, it was going to bang. So I um, haven't read it, but it's near the top of my, it's in my to be read pull box uh, or a short box. But yeah, that, that's, that's, that sounds like an interesting um, synopsis. I've heard it described and I don't know if you can relate to this or not. Um, Go someone for it. told me that Vanish is uh is spawn if spawn was written well <laughs> um i don't know do so, you get that vibe i have a soft spot in my heart for spawn so i don't you know i haven't I read spawn but i also but. have a, a, a place in for it in my heart because um i just like look at it as this like pinnacle of indie comics it's the longest right. running comic book uh, indie comic book series of all time it's just if it, it feels special you know I mean, Spawn's like early image comics, you know, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it was it's been very successful. It has a uh, a fun movie with bad CGI. So it has <laughs> right. a place. It has a place in my heart. Um, but I, I don't know. I think you'll enjoy it. I honestly think uh, knowing you, I think you would enjoy it. And it's a series that I would recommend to anyone. I I actually brought it to work today. My friend Ivan, who has been mentioned before. Uh, yeah, yeah. I gave it an issue number one, and he was like, oh, I'm, "I gotta buy issue number two now." Nice, he just, dude. That's... He just started. He just started collecting. So yeah, it's one of those. It's one of those first issues that just grabs you. Nice. I, I'm excited to get to it. Um, it's just, yeah, yeah. It's like one of those things. I guess I was maybe waiting for like one, two, and three. Maybe I could just like blow through them. You know what I mean? You're gonna um, end up doing what I'm doing with The Walking Dead, where I waited to fifty. I wouldn't. I'm not gonna wait till fifty, but. 
um similar to that yeah um but going back to what you're saying about spawn um yeah spawn's one of the so i i've been collecting the compendiums here and it's similar what how you feel about it it's just like as a an appreciation of comic book history and like the art form like um you know todd mcfarland's writing you know maybe isn't the best but i i really like the art it, it does like you know um it is like really 90s right like lots of buckles and chains and uh but there, there's something that i like about the art and i'm i'm pretty big into those you know big heaven and hell type stories like they're you know super super large and like there's this huge world out there um so th that's what always drew me in with spawn um but i totally get if someone's like yo this writing is kind of poo poo i'm like you know what yeah maybe <laughs> but the art <laughs> um but yeah so that, that that's kind of I don't know, my thoughts on spawn but my recent reads that i'd like to recommend to people um i feel like this segment if we can you know we're going to continue to do it but it might just devolve into being like an indie like an indie showcase which you know nothing wrong with that there's always you know got to get some eyes on indie comics but first one I, similar to you i have two uh you know we're supposed to only have one so first one i've got is called uh love everlasting uh, oh, I, I, I i own it i haven't read it so so you would you would like this one um give people a quick rundown without spoiling anything uh love Ever everlasting written by uh tom king um art by shirari sorry butchered that and hollingsworth um, essentially the plot is this girl um it's kind of like an ode to like old romance comics of the the you know 50s 60s whatever 70s um where you know you got your your girl and she's falling in love and it's very like uppity there's no stakes really but you just read it it's a good time but this kind of has a twist to it um where she's kind of trapped in like this loop of falling in love and as soon as she falls in love like it gets reset and it's like a groundhog day sort of and it's it's kind of um three issues are out so far and the story he, he's only teasing like what's going on like a little bit each issue but i think what really sends this series home for me and i'll pull it out and show you guys um all right we'll see how well this works but even the art is kind of similar to kind of like this old um oh yeah no i the art was the reason why i bought it yeah i mean for tom sure, right? king like I, tom king is always going to be a big draw even no, I haven't read a lot of Tom King. It's just like I heard Tom King and I was like, oh, I have to buy this. Yeah, th that's how I felt too. Um, so this is being published by Image Comics, but I think uh, Tom King, uh, he's got some deal with Substack where he's you know writing comics for them and then it, uh, Image is the physical publication for it. Um, but she's kind of stuck in this loop of falling in love and it keeps getting reset and she's starting to like remember like a little bits from each loop and she's trying to figure out what's going on. And, um, and yeah, so love everlasting, I'd recommend it. And then the other one that I've got here, um, is called dark spaces, wildfire from IDW. Um, that's the cover right there, but it's written by Scott Snyder. Uh, Hayden Sherman's on the art. So this series is these, uh, this group of women firefighters, um, most of them are ex -con like are convicts and they're trying to, you know, fight fires to reduce their sentence. Um, and they decide that, Hey, this, this entire forest is about to be burnt down. There's this, you know, super rich person's house that I know about. Why don't we do a heist and, uh, rob it before it gets burnt down, like steal all their, you know, Bitcoin or whatever inside like the server of the house. Um, and it doesn't go as well as they plan of course um, so it's like a high it's like a heist comic but i think that hayden sherman's art paired with uh, scott snyder's characterization like each of the convicts these women convicts have you know really fleshed out personalities um, we're learning more and more about their lives and the lives they led leading up to this um but yeah it's pretty solid i would recommend it it's kind of because you know idw is known for um doing like uh i was i forgot the word but like transformers or i think they have the power Rangers, right? so yeah like they do a lot of licensed comics i'm pretty sure right so this is kind of their first foray into yeah, i um, think they just lost the the right for transformers and i 
think Robert Kirkman was thinking of buying them. But Skybound. Interesting. Right. And, uh, do they have um? What else do they have? They have trans. They they have GI Joe as well, and they I think they're losing those. I, th- I think you're right. Yeah, it, the, mo- like by and large, their bread and butter was um, licensed comics, um, but they're kind of starting to take like a, a slight pi- pivot, and they have this new imprint called IDW Originals. Um, so you know they're inviting a lot of uh, you know comic book creators in the industry to come on and do some creator owned um, comics. So. It's um it's a pretty cool initiative and I'd recommend this first um one of their first series that they started out with. That's a uh, Dark Spaces Wildfire. So yeah. Um all right. That's enough uh jibber jabbing, all right, Christian. We got topics to get to, buddy. <laughs> now, big topic uh oh, one of the topics is digital comics. And I'm going to pass it right off to you. I know you got a lot to say. Get off your chest about digital comics. What do you think of them, dude? So I'm going to start by saying this. Um, I wasn't a big fan at all. Like, uh, I was totally opposed to the, to the idea of, like, not owning something physically. Um, that's just how my brain works. Like, I, I enjoy owning physical movies and video games. That's why I got the Xbox Series X because I wanted to be able to put a disc in it. And uh, yeah, I just always liked the idea of physical media. So I was never a fan of uh, com- uh, digital comics. Then I got Marvel Unlimited. And it's not like I use it all that often, but I, you know, it's good sometimes. If I'm, like Hulk Gray. We talked about Hulk Gray. I read, uh, I went on a trip and I, I read Hulk Gray on my iPad. And it was just perfect because I didn't really have to carry anything with me. And uh, what else? Um, what else did I read? Oh, we I read some X Men there. Um, and it's just it, it's it's this nice thing of like the the best way I would describe. I know I'm rambling a lot, but the best way I would describe no. digital comics. It's like if you're trying to get into comics and you don't have the ability to like spend a lot of money, digital comics are an easy way to get into older comics that are not cheap and just have a place where you can just like catch up because a lot of this hobby is catching up, you know? Um, so I, I enjoy digital comics and uh, my only experience up until like a week ago was uh, Marvel unlimited, which is an app that I like. I think it's, it's good. It has a lot of Marvel comics. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they do not get uh Marvel comics as soon as they come out. Uh, I don't know what the yeah. wait time is. What is it like six? I months? believe it's three months. Three months, yeah. Um, yep. But it's, I mean, three months is not that bad if you're just jumping in right now. Um, right. So I, that's my opinion on digital comics. I was, uh, I was not a fan, and now I, I enjoy them. I mean, I've been reading manga. I've been reading digitally. So. Hmm. Yeah, I think um, so. For me, right when it comes down to digital comics, similar to you. Um, I don't think I would ever purchase a digital comic as in, you know, like instead of getting single issues for my LCS, getting the same thing on digital, that doesn't appeal to me because then, you know, you can't resell them, right? That's always the the whole thing. But as we go more and more forward, it, it's kind of looking like the industry is, you know, sl- just like the same way for movies and everything. It's kind of sh- shifting to a, a streaming type model um obviously we have dc universe infinite ultra which is i just gotta say right off the bat worst name for a service like ever (laughs) that has to be the worst name it's just awful um but you know they are putting their foot forward and saying yo with if you get dc universe infinite ultra at 99 bucks a year you get um new comics one month after they release and that kind of to me was the Oh, that was like the aha moment, right? In a time where me personally, I'm trying to save a little bit of money, save it for a house and stuff like that. I mean, you you can't beat the value of, you know, all this, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's kind of just, it's almost overwhelming, like opening up DC Universe Infinite app right now because I have available to me just so many comics. And then because of that, I also subscribe to, um, like you said, Marvel Unlimited. Uh, In the past, I've done Comixology Unlimited. That's actually, you know, I used to read on that before I even 
purchased a comic book physically, um, you know, when we talk about the start of the pandemic and all that stuff. But so I, I'm with you where I wouldn't want to buy a physical comic or sorry, buy a digital comic. But I do think that um, when it comes down to it, it's, it's really hard to beat the value that uh, these different subscription services provide. Um, so that's that's kind of how I feel about it. And I'll say one more thing before I pass it off to you for more thoughts on this is um, I think that a lot of people, uh, when when someone says digital, like, so what do you think of, like, what which device do you think of reading on when think someone my says iPad. digital? Because iPad, right? I feel like a lot, it gets like a bad rap from a lot of people uh, when they say digital comics because they're thinking, oh, it's it will look terrible on my phone. Like comics look terrible on my phone or why would I read on a computer, right? And it's like, yeah, I understand what you guys are saying, but, and not everybody has an iPad just laying around, right? But if you just have an iPad and it's the same size as a comic book, I don't know, man, it, it's it's pretty good. I, You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of it, pros. It, it's a privilege comics, for sure. Uh, but at the same time, what I will say is like, listen, I know you and me are young, right? We don't have, I mean, we have our bills, but like we're not doing everything, right. you know? <laughs> So collecting physical comic books is a privilege, you know, and it's something that I'll keep doing because I love collecting. I love owning, you know, having the boxes with the comics. I, I like that. It makes me happy. But, uh, you know, there, there's options and we will talk about this uh, later. Uh, there's there's times where digital media or digital comics makes sense. Uh, like I said, new readers, don't be ashamed to just read online. It takes a lot to ca- it's a lot of catching up, a lot of catching up. We're not we're not ignoring that. Right. So I I think that that is something that makes total sense to me. You know, oh, you want to, you want to start reading and like you can't buy a thirty dollar graphic novel, you know, or like twenty single issues. Like yeah, no, start digitally. That makes total sense to me. I'm not gonna criticize you for it. If anything, it's smart financially. Yeah, for sure. I mean, for me, yeah. uh, I think I was lucky enough to like get into physical comics in a in a place where like it's not like I'm like you know doing amazingly, but I I'm still young and I can you know I have I work and I have the ability to um to jump into buying physical comics. But like we just talked about it, I'm taking things off my list because you know it gets expensive. Yeah. So for I. Sure. I I'm now a supporter of digital comics as well. Nice. Um, I I will say too, like the other thing is uh, space. (laughs) Um, You know, like (coughs) long boxes and long boxes, they just take up a lot of space. And um, and yeah, just like the ability to have, oh, I'll just, you know, I'm going on a trip. I'm going to download, you know, 20 different series on my iPad and I'll be good to go. I can read offline. Um, nice bright it's, screen. I could read in the dark, right? Like there's another I mean, thing go on that, and on. There's a lot of pros, but another thing that made me laugh is um, looking now at my life. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm almost 25. You know, at some point I'll, I'll, you know, move out. Um, and it's you, you. I think of the commodities I have right now. I live with my parents. It's great. Love my parents. I've talked about this before. I'll say it again. They deserve <laughs> the love. Uh, but then I'm thinking like, oh, if I move out at some point, I'm like, okay, one bedroom or a studio. And then I'm like, oh, no, I have so many boxes. There you go. And yep, I, yep. And then the other things I think about is like, oh, I need a place where I can film the podcast or like I need a place where I can film my videos. But also the boxes and shelves of comic books. So physical books are a complication at times. Yeah, and you know, I would I would suggest um, and recommend to people if you are kind of on the fence of like, oh, digital or physical. I mean, you can you can subscribe to some of these services, um, and if you really like a series, end up buying it physically. That's kind of what yeah, I've been re- read the um, first issue transitioning towards. Yeah, for sure. Read the first, sure. issue, read the first issue digitally. Yep, totally, dude. Yeah, um, I mean, so don't tell them I sent you, but. Just go online if you can't afford physical. Yeah, I so I, I'm a little bit on the fence of um, 
I wouldn't recommend anybody like pirate anything, but I, I know what you mean. Like sometimes people are in a hard place and it's like um, you can't even afford like the digital like subscription services. It's but luckily for you. Um, yeah, I mean, there are if, free options for digital comics as well. So maybe there you can were talk free a little options. bit about that. Uh, right. I, I guess we're gonna concentrate. Should we? T- we're gonna concentrate on one digital option today. Um, yeah, we we can. One that uh, and and we'll say this: we just we're not just saying things. We actually have tried it. Uh, we're coming to you with a new series. So get excited! Um, you yep. want to talk about it, Cody? I'll let you take the take the floor. Yeah, dude. So um, you know when we're talking about you know, affording physical, affording digital, all these subscription services, whatever, there's another option and a lot of people aren't aware of it. Um, so we kind of wanted to take this time and um, shine a light on this this option that people have that it, it, they might not be utilizing if you are a comic fan. So if you're a comic fan, listen up, get a library card. <laughs> um, like so obviously you can go to the library and get physical comics but what not a lot of people realize is that same physical library card can get you access to i don't want to say thousands i don't know if it's in the thousands but with an app called hoopla h-o-o-p-l-a um you can plug your library card in and it syncs right up to your library digitally and you have so many free comics available to you through this app and you can get the app on any device. I mean, I, I don't have an Android, but I'm I'm assuming it's on Android devices as well. Works great on my iPad. So I have Hoopla in addition to Marvel Unlimited and DC Universe Infinite Ultra. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, we're going to start a new series and we're going to call it First Run, um, where we take our Hoopla app, find 10 series that we were thinking of reading, uh, mostly focused on either volume ones of series or, you know, if the series is just collected in one, uh, you know, seven issue series in a trade and that's available on Hoopla, that would go on our list as well. Put them all on a list, put them all on a wheel, spin it, and then read it for you guys. Maybe do a ranking thing later on with the 10 series that we've chosen. Um, so that's the introduction to the series and that's going to be called First Run. And the first uh, segment we're going to be doing for First Run is going to be on the series bitter root so, yeah so i mean the yeah. way i see it me and cody cannot just sit here and recommend things without knowing them it, it, that's True. not what we do i mean we like to recommend things that we have experience with so we said hey hoopla is a great app you know it's free you have a library card you know i had never owned a library card before this so cody had to walk me through the process of getting one um <laughs> And uh, we chose Bitter Root, which was an indie comic. We we're like, let's do this. It's here. We can both read it. And uh, then we'll do a review of... I guess we'll, we're also reviewing the app slightly. But, uh, I mean, the, any, my thoughts on the app is it's free. It's great. I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, they have, they uh, they also have books. If you like books, I like books. Cody, you might. Um. Books are cool. <laughs> um, but it's one of those things where, like, I, I went, they have IDW, they have Marvel, they have DC, they have Image, boom. They have comics. Yeah, and they yeah. have a decent amount of, like, recent series, too. It, yeah, it they, have, of, uh, um, they have White Knight. I was super surprised. Batman, White Knight. Yeah, and so, sometimes they get uh, single issues uh, digitally of series that are, like, still ongoing like that that's how new um you know we we aren't joking when we say that um but yeah so we thought of you know just just uh to kind of go off what you were saying about like the hoopla app in general it it, it's not like as feature rich as um you know this marvel (laughs) unlimited or dc universe infinite um but it's totally absolutely serviceable for reading comics um it when I was on a train uh, yesterday, I was traveling yesterday, pulled up Bitterroot on my phone and I was reading, you know, like panel by panel on the Hoopla app. Um, so I don't know. It's it does exactly what it needs to do and it's free. So I'd really recommend everybody download Hoopla, get a library card and start reading comics. 
join us as we kind of you know explore all these different series and um and yeah so so um like you were saying the first one we're gonna be starting with bitterroot and uh to kind of frame this discussion i asked some of our uh crossover comics friends some friends of the show um to write in with some of their thoughts on bitterroot as a series and i thought that that might be a good place to start and kind of frame our discussion um so the first one i have is from uh, Saucers and Sorceries. Uh, she was obviously on our last episode, the Halloween special. Definitely check it out if you haven't. A little plug, we dressed up. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, Jess or Saucers and Sorceries uh, said, wait, Saucers? Sorry, Jess, I messed up your name. Um, <laughs> but she says, I've read all three volumes of the series and I absolutely recommend it. The story is engaging and the lore and monsters are so different from other typical Monster Hunter titles. The art and color palette are also fantastic. I also really enjoy the essays at the end as well. Definitely, definitely a great companion to the series. Um, so yeah, so Je- Jess recommends the series. I guess it's kind of a first thoughts and a f- initial impressions of Bitterroot. Um, Christian, what do you think of it? Uh, I, so first of all, um, and I, I will say this about Bitterroot. You'll jump in and be confused. I was so That's lost. Fair. Now, now I love it, and I will continue reading it, um, which I want to know what you thought after I talk, you know, because yeah, yeah. my opinion first, your second, Cody. <laughs> um, I thought it was great. I love the... How do I explain this? I can read it and know what type of music is playing in the background. Does that make sense? I feel you, dude. I feel you. It's kind of got this like rhythm to it, right? Like it's it has a rhythm. The colors. I mean, you're immediately even the location. You you get an idea that it's it's a it's a period piece, so it's not current time, and uh, it jumps to like I feel like every character has their own music to them. You know, every character Mm -hmm. has their own personality, um, and and I like that. I mean, there's I can go from jazz to rock to a million things because that it's it doesn't sell a story it sells it sells a a, a moment you know it's an experience and I like that and the art is is honestly breathtaking um, yeah dude um, well so I <laughs> yeah. guess um, before we like go on with our thoughts of the series maybe we should do like a quick like tiny synopsis um, so Bitterroot is a story of this family of monster hunters um they hunt these creatures called uh Jinu. i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly but essentially these are people that have been um i guess the way the book describes it like their soul has been so corrupted by um racism which is you know a big theme of the book and something we'll, we'll touch on later with um another write-in that we have um so their souls are so corrupted that they turn into these monsters and uh the this family of, I, I say hunters, but they, they really try to, um, you know, heal and, uh, you know, heal their souls so they aren't, you know, these monsters. They don't typically kill them is kind of the goal. Um, every soul is worth saving, that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of what the story is about. Um, and I know exactly what you mean when you say the beginning is a little confusing because they, they really do just drop you into this world, right? Like you are in the world of Bitterroot and you're kind of figuring out as you go. Um, But as you start learning more about it, it, you know, it starts to, you know, you you start to figure it out more and um, you can kind of wrap your arms around kind of these big, big uh, themes that they're trying to get across to you. Um, So, yeah, so I guess what did you, so those were your your initial impressions, but what did you think of, um, I guess, like the story that it's trying to tell? I think the story is great. I mean, what I will say, it's like, Saying that it drops you in in the middle of nowhere is not a problem because you jump into the action and then you have a for sure I think one or two issues it slows down, but not to a boring level. More it's like a hey here's the story here's what they do, and here's where it's going, and it goes up. It's like a roller coaster, and I like it. It's it's hard to like because like here's a, and I will say this I don't remember any of the characters' names. Uh, but that's not a problem because I love them as a family. Right. Like I, I love they're all individuals and they have their own story. But as a family, I love the dynamic. Um, it feels real. 
I mean, it's about monster mm-hmm. hunting, but the dynamic feels like a real family, and that's something I really enjoyed. I thought the the villains were really interesting, and I think touching on subjects like that is important. You know, uh, talk about rep- rep- representation. Um, being too totally honest with you um it's a big topic and and i think sometimes we shy away from it but um i'm a latino i've lived in the united states for six years and i never cared about being represented it was never something in my mind because i i grew up watching american media right and then moving here i found that i started missing home and missing who i was um and and I, I started caring more about being represented and and just looking at my culture and being like, wow, this is something that's important to me. And that doesn't mean that like, oh, I just want to see people from Ecuador represented. No, it means that when I see other cultures being represented and being protected, I I relate. And it's it's important. I mean, it's a, it's a story about racism just post this monster hunting and it's great you really feel the emotion behind it it's not really like on your face it's not like racism's bad like we know right. that but it, it uses the themes in a very smart way and uh i don't know i thought it was a beautiful message uh, i'm gonna keep reading it it's a, it's a story sure. that i never thought i would read it but uh yeah it's, like it's as beautiful. a as a first volume i'm totally with you dude like um, what a good, like, what a good first impression to this world, I guess, is, is a better way to say it. Um, cause you talk about the family unit and that is so core to the story and every character, same as you, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm terrible with names, but you know, every character feels unique and they all have their own voice and you can really tell that that is the case. Um, and I guess like this store this uh family they're not at their at their peak of their um you know of like there's so many people in the family and you know they got everything under control the uh the point that this story drops you into drops the reader into is at a point where after the um the real events of the like the the race riots in the 1919 which is a subject that i admittedly don't know like you know too much about um but it is kind of hinted at in the story. And I was doing, you know, some light research before recording. Um, you know, they, they take these real events and kind of give them um, an explanation within this world. So after these race riots of the 1919s in Harlem, New York, all across the U.S., but um, I, I guess Harlem had it pretty bad at that point in time. Um, the Like a lot of the family members have died or are presumed dead. Um, so like this family is on the back foot. There isn't as much of them. They kind of have to, you know, um, people that are typically like the healers or focus more on making the potions and um, keeping the family together, as opposed to actively fighting the, they kind of have to switch roles and they're, um, so I, I guess I'm, I'm rambling a little bit, but it's just seeing this family that is so cohesive and um, they are on the back foot, but they have to kind of come together and, you know, even though some things, you know, bad happened between the family in the past, they have to overcome this new challenge of all these new threats that are emerging. Um, in addition to the Janu, you know, where I introduced to other monsters and other demons and stuff like that. Um, so yes, yeah, so the family part, you know, you touched on it. The family part to me was uh, really stand out. And that's kind of what um, I initially liked. And then uh, going forward, you mentioned it, the art is absolutely fantastic in this series. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll, I'll read uh, Mateo's a um, little bit of his write-in before we continue more. So Orion Scott Comics, you can find his social media down in the description. Um, he said, before reading Bitterroot, I didn't read anything about it previously, so I went in blind, kind of like us. Um, right from the beginning, you're thrown into this world and you figure out the lay of the land throughout the story. And I love when a writer does that. The writing is fantastic as well as the core meaning of the story and then kind of tacking on to what you were talking about in regards to um, representation and stuff like that. An excellent allegory of how hatred, bigotry, and racism can change a person's humanity into something monster-like. Very well executed and written well overall. So 
that's kind of just tying up, you know, what we're talking about, the, the writing and the central message is really important. And I agree with you. It doesn't hit you over the head. It's not, you know, too on the nose. It's, I mean, think about it this way. We're, it's never mentioned like, oh, these are like, there's an allegory or there's a metaphor. But like, it's about a family who is lost. I mean, we know that they tor- they turn into demons or monsters because of hatred and racism. They did tell you that. But even when telling you that, you just have a, a story about a family who has lost family members due to these monsters. And and it's not to get emotional, but it's it's kind of beautiful even then seeing them like they're holding back the, this anger and they want to heal people. They don't they're not going out to become, you know, the thing they they hate, you know. And, yeah, dude. And it, it's I'm totally with you. And it's never like, oh, this is this is what we're trying to say. No, it's like if you get the the message behind it, which is important, it'll it'll you know it'll make you think. But if you don't get the message behind it, it's still a great monster hunting story. You For know? sure, like um, I think their choice to kind of take you know real world themes like racism, right? Like something we deal with, you know, unfortunately we still deal with even today. Um, taking that, but then building the story around that and kind of explaining that, um, you know, the monsters are created because of their racism. That kind of adds that extra layer, that little twist that um, take takes it from what you're saying into um, some people, not me, but some people would say, oh, it's just, it's, you know, talking about racism too much or whatever. But then also, hey, no, we're going to tell you a great story with great artwork with a message, right? Which is something that, um, you know, you don't, you know, I'm reading Amazing Spider-Man and stuff like that. Like you you don't really get these themes um, all the time, right? There's there if you look for it, but to find a comic that's like this, that's so well written um, with a strong message like that is pretty, it's pretty rare, right? So. Yeah, I mean, if I wanted to rate it, um, I would give it a run on the, eight and a half out of ten which uh, i think it's yeah. a great rating and uh, i will say and i i don't know if you'll follow me in this journey cody i will read volume two we don't necessarily have to talk about it on the podcast but i'll be talking to you about it um i i definitely loved it and uh i don't know if there's collected editions i don't know how it works i i'm i think it's an important story and i i want to buy it i want to own it for sure. Um, I think that an omnibus or a compendium um, is coming out soon. For It's available right now for pre-order. Um, but I, I'm with you. This is a series that I do want to collect physically. Glad I read it. Um, but so before we kind of move off of um, and finish our discussion on Bitterroot, uh, I think I want to talk a little bit more about the art because I think that is... 100%. Um, for sure. Like, you know, obviously the story is good. The themes and messaging is good. But to get that across, the artwork is obviously very important. Um, So I'll just read off of the rest of um, Orion Scott Comics' little write-in here. Uh, So he said, the artwork is very stylistic and the coloring is fantastic and vibrant. It maintained his attention uh, with all the small details. That's fun to look for. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed this series and we'll definitely keep reading. So it kind of goes on to what we were saying. Definitely a series we want to keep reading. But tell me a little bit about what you liked about the artwork. Um. What I like about the artwork, and it's like I'm trying to think back, and I'm I'm trying to think back to the to the art, and I cannot remember like I remember like color, like you know, like just bursts of color, but it's not sure. like you know we have a sometimes you have a character, and it's like I'm wearing a, a brown shirt and uh, black pants right now. Sometimes it'll just be like one color throughout the page with shading, you know, but right. they use like. They, they, it's very stylistic and it's something For I sure. like it's the color is not there to distract the the, the, the eye but to complement the story yeah well said um, kind of what what you're saying I'm trying to think of like a comparison that I can make and my mind keeps on wanting to go to like a like a Disney art style but that that kind of seems reductive and I don't mean it to um, but kind of like the facial features and like the, it's kind of got this like very um, thick blacks. I, I'm just flipping through it on the 
off screen here. Very deep blacks. It's kind of like an inky sort of yeah, look. Yeah, it has to it. very, and you're very right, thick outlines. And, For sure. Uh, but like sometimes the outlines are not even, it's not perfect. And that's what I like. Yeah. I'm trying to find a, a page in specific that really stuck out to me. And I, I, I just like, that's kind of like the, the nail in the coffin for like me loving the series already. Um, it was uh, at the very initial start of the story, you kind of have three things going on, you know, like this family, like this family member over here and then the main family member and like, you know, what's going on. Um, and each strip on the page. Oh, here it is here. So like, um, I don't know if this will show up on the pod. I'll put it up on the very top. I'll put it up, don't um, worry. Yeah, okay, so I'll send it to you. But the very top, you know, you have like this strip of um, these these cops that are are sent in and um, we kind of find out why later, but they're just like, you know, being very brutal on um, the people inside of the club, I think was the situation going on. But then the middle strip is like a a very green and yellow and the very bottom is like a very dark, uh, like red and brown. So kind of just showing you hey these three these three things are going on at the same time it's a very interesting choice to kind of picture it that way in this double double page spread um but that was like that's what stuck out to me i'm like oh man this that's that's pretty cool so um, i'm trying to find another uh but yeah so i think tell me tell me a little bit about the monster design too because i think that's a, a very cool part of it i think the monster design is cool because none of them look the same Yep, and I think it's uh, if we're going for the allegory of racism, um, it also matches. People uh have different opinions, and people have different ways of saying things. So their their opinions may manifest in different ways. But um, the monsters are mon are monsters, you know. Right. There's some monsters that are really small in the in the comic, and there's some that are really big, but they're still both deadly yeah and i think the um so yeah the, i'm on a page here where yeah you're right every monster is different and it's a very interesting uh interesting way to look at it and then i guess kind of tying back to um what we were saying with the uh you know the very important message that the story is trying to tell um just how different people deal with you know, deal with trauma, deal with, um, deal with racism and everything. Some people, uh, like this family here, their, their whole goal is to heal. Some people are like, you know what? I've been burnt so many times. Why are we trying to heal these people? Like, let's just kill them. They can't be saved. Right. Um, which is like a very dark way to look at things. And then, um, the main bad guy of the story that we get introduced to, he's kind of taken it to the other extreme of just like, like, burn it all down like this world is awful um it's so like oh his no i gave them in specific was very cool he, but he said something like oh th- they had their chance now it's my chance to take control right uh and it, it's a very interesting place to leave the leave the first volume um and i you know we, we've said it you know a bunch of times already but this is definitely a series that we plan on continuing and um i don't know i'm just i was blown away after i finished it i i started you know reading it at the end i didn't finish like a full second read through but um i started reading it from the beginning again um just because i wanted to cover it for the for the podcast i wanted to kind of understand it and digest it a little more but also it's one of those comics that i feel like you can just read over and over again it's so action-packed right um it's just a lot of fun yeah and I, um, that has been our review of a bitter root volume one definitely recommend this to anyone um yeah indie comics have this thing where they can just grab you and they're they're not tied to years of stories that they need to follow they can just make their own story and make it this feels like the the writer is coming from a place that they understand and know you know for sure they're taking kind of their their real world like lived experiences um and like i was saying earlier giving historical context to what's going on and kind of integrating both of those things um into this comic it it really does feel like a like a love letter like you were saying um it comes from a place of you know 
like understanding and like they th- these are lived experiences that they have that they're translating into a comic so yeah yeah and i guess to close this out we can talk about um the this new segment we're trying to do on the the podcast which is uh we're gonna be following on hoopla um so people can follow along with us um it, it's uh we we got 10 series from hoopla 10 comic book series that we found on hoopla that we've been meaning to read or we find interesting um and we're gonna spin a wheel and we're gonna just read what you know like right now we'll spin a wheel and the next time we we do a review it'll be based on that story and you know we'll we'll spin a wheel right now so you have time to read it and next time it's like a book club kind of you know you yeah can, we'll, you can... we'll come back in uh i guess we'll come back in maybe like our, our next solo episode or maybe we'll have a guest that can join us on this um kind of little experiment yeah. um so yeah so why don't you give them the first 10 books that are on the wheel for first run which is the series what we're calling the series first I, run. i'll talk about my five and then do you have your yeah. five over there yeah i do i can pull it up okay so i'll talk about my five and i want to say these are not books that i necessarily know everything about and cody if you know more about them um you can please feel free to you know interject i have batman noel which i know nothing about but i know a lot of people recommend yep um uh, don't know what it's about. Sounds cool. Christmas, maybe. I saw snow. Um, I think it's a. It takes place around Christmas. I, I could be mistaken. Good. I haven't read it yeah. myself, but the I Noel hear part people recommend kind of... it as a Christmas series. Yeah. Uh, a righteous thirst for vengeance, which I know nothing about, but I also see a lot of people buying. Um, yeah, Rick Remender. Um, he, if his name is on the book, it, it's kind of like like a Donny Cates thing. Like Rick Remender is pretty well regarded. Um, that comic I was collecting in single issues, but I kind of fell off pretty quickly. Uh, I probably got to like issue three or four of being read. Um, but I, you know, if it lands this week, I would love to go back and and you know keep up with it more. But it was a series I was enjoying. But I just could. Then I up. have uh, I have blue in green by Ramby, which yep. I saw and it. It's just it's Ramby. I know Cody, you like Ramby, so I picked it for you. And it just oh, looks so. very good. It's about a musician, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, then we have I have Sweet Sweet Tooth, which I watched the show and I liked it. And I know the graphic novel is way better than the show. Jeff Lemire, Jeff Lemire, and then I have a, a Study in Emerald, which is a graphic novel by uh, Neil Gaiman. Gaiman, I don't know. Uh, you know. Can't spell sometimes. We can ask Jess after how to pronounce yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Study in Emerald is a is a, a Sherlock Holmes book, and uh, the description said Sherlock Holmes meets uh, Lovecraft. That was cool enough for me. Yeah. So Cody, I don't know if you want to go for um your five. Yeah, so the five I chose, I try try to choose a wide. Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, a wide range of um, you know indie and Marvel DC. So I have Firepower, which is written by uh, Robert Kirkman, art by Chris Samney, I believe. Um, it's like a martial arts book, really high action. Uh, it's been I've been meaning to uh, read that one so I can buy the deluxe edition if I like it, which I assume I will. And then also on part of my five is Wind, which is a series by I think Boom Studios. Uh, written by James Tiny the Fourth, um, kind of like a high fantasy. I don't know too much about it, but I know that it is, you know, a currently ongoing series, and it has other volumes that people like a lot. Um, I chose Swamp Thing by Ron B, so we both have a Ron, a Ron B book on there. Um, I chose that more as like a. I want to. I was trying to reread it um, in October, but I didn't get to it because I was on my uh, reading slump, but. Uh, I, I kind of wanted you to read it more, so that's kind of funny that we oh, that's both fun. things that. Um, and then I also picked uh, Strange Academy, which is forgot the creative team. Sorry about that, but um, it's uh, Doctor Strange's school. It's kind of similar to like a Hogwarts type thing, but this class of magic users, kids come in and they're taught how to use their powers. Um, but I heard the series is really good, um, so I wanted to pick that. And then finally from Marvel, we have Beta Ray Bill, which is written by, um, oh, geez, we were just talking about him a lot. 
who who did uh Jurassic League and um oh three names this is embarrassing Daniel Warren Johnson <laughs> yeah there we go Th- three names you got it <laughs> yeah dude when you said that it clicked um so Beta Red Bill I don't know if the art is by Daniel Warren Johnson either or like as well but I, I know I don't wrote, know anything about this series the only Beta Ray Bill I've ever read was in Thor the current run right so. Um, that sounds interesting. It's just a character that I've, you know, always wanted to get into. I think he he's cool from what I've read, just like you. Um, but yeah, I heard, you know, Dan Warren Johnson. I, I'm trying to read all this stuff. So, okay. So yeah, those so are my I five. Guess, I guess we'll spin it. it for this episode because we didn't have time to figure out how we'll do it. I will be spinning it and Cody will be seeing my reaction to it. I will put it up on the screen though. So let me, like, I'm going to, this is so professional. I'm screen recording my phone. Yeah, dude. Let's go for okay, it. Okay, so let's um, spin it. It's spinning. So uh, just to remind the, the listeners and viewers, we have 10 books on there. All of them are available on Hoopla. So if you want to join us on this journey, download Hoopla and kind of treat it like a book club. What do we okay, got? Cody, do you want to know? Lay it on me, dude. It's on the screen already, but it's Batman Noel. Nice. Yeah, so that's what we'll cool. be reading. Um, I would say... Get excited for that next month. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll be hey, perfect for December. Perfect Look at that. for the Christmas time, kind of get you in the fall mood. Um, I'm looking for a dark, snowy Christmas book. So yeah, that'd be cool. Well, yeah, and I think that that's about it for this episode of Color Break. I, I think you know we're trying to get into newer things where we you know sometimes do reviews sometimes you know we throw in these little series because i i know i know people love listening to us talk for an hour apparently for some reason some someone's uh, out there listening right now but but you know it'd be fun to give you guys something to actually look forward to um i know me and cody are also planning on doing uh in between us uh, a book exchange for christmas where he sends me a book, I send him a book, and we will talk about that. So, you know, things to look forward to. So you, it's not just like, oh, let's see what they're talking about this week. But it's like, oh, I know they're going to review this. So you, you guys can start reading Batman Noel. We will do the same thing, and we'll talk about it next month. We'll do – I think we can keep it to once a month. Uh, if we get excited, maybe we'll do two, two a month. But we're trying to have more guests in between, so – um but yeah no it's, yeah. it's been a great episode you have anything to say cody yeah i was gonna say um you know bear in mind like you know all these segments are new we're still workshopping them but yeah thanks for sticking with us and um you know be sure to check out our past episodes if you missed them our last one with jess was a lot of fun it was our halloween special we talked about halloween movies halloween comic series or i guess horror not halloween but just like horror comics and movies and uh we dressed up we all worked pretty hard in our costume um, also, be sure to check out our sister podcast, uh, Crossover Comics. I wanted to give those guys a shout out. I think they're doing pretty cool stuff. Um, I know they missed their, their last week, but they'll be right back to it next week. So I uh, look forward to that. And yeah, um, yeah Hoopla. that's all I got, dude. Yeah, check out Hoopla. If you want free comics, you know, get a library yeah, card. Download Hoopla. It's another, great option, this, uh, for, yeah. it's another great option for people to start reading comics. And yeah. Uh, Thank you for joining us as always. Um, give us a review. Give us like however many starts you want. It doesn't have to be five. It could be one if you don't like it. But hey, if you don't like it, maybe we'll know what we're doing wrong. So um, yeah, thanks for watching and have a good day, night, morning. And uh, yeah, take care.